welcome to gurukul lectures in this journey of archigoniates we have so far covered many aspects of bryophytes and also in our previous lectures we have seen the origin and evolution of pteridophytes today we are going to discuss the structure and reproduction of pteridophytes its various body parts the anatomy of pteridophytes in general and also the reproduction in pteridophytes in general so as far as the structure of pteridophytes is concerned pteridophytes have well defined root stem and leaves in the sporophytic generation in case of pteridophytes the sporophytic generation is the most predominant phase in the life cycle all plant organs are covered by cuticle and xylem consists of lignified cells which are called as tracheids we have also seen that cuticle and lignin were absent in case of bryophytes pteridophytes develop primary roots directly from embryo which anchor the soil and absorbs moisture and nutrients for uptake in most of the fern and related species they lack roots and they rely entirely for water and nutrient uptake on a simple buried system uh, stem covered with rhizoids the primary roots does not grow very long and soon it is replaced by adventitious roots fern roots may have capacity of branching and each root can develop into a long lived system these systems lack cambium therefore secondary growth does not occur in the primary roots and the other adventitious roots of pteridophytes the pteridophyte stem differs in shape size and mode of growth also it is usually called as rhizome and this rhizome contains the growing point or the meristem the rhizomes can be of three main types the rhizome could be of creeping type it could be of erect type or it could be of tufted type the rhizomes are thin and sometimes it could be thick woody and fleshy also the vascular system of stem is called as steel the steel consists of xylem and phloem the xylem comprises tracheids and phloem consists of sieve cells in this diagram you can see various cross section of various species of pteridophytes showing steel in all these type of steel the xylem is surrounded by phloem or sometimes they are interrupted by the patches of phloem the steels in pteridophytes can be categorized broadly in two types the proto steel has central solid core of xylem which is surrounded by phloem whereas in case of siphonal steel the, the there is a presence of parenchymatous pith in the center which is surrounded by xylem and followed by phloem towards the outer side if we could describe these two types of steel diagrammatically we could see that the proto steel lacks any kind of pith in the center so the central portion is occupied by xylem tissues and it is surrounded by phloem tissues these steels could be of different shapes and different arrangements for example here in case of actino steel it is almost a star like appearance whereas 
in case of plectosteel the xylem and phloem is found in patches and bands on the contrary in case of siphonosteel there is a universal presence of pith in the center of the stem lies parenchymatous tissues and these parenchymatous tissues are termed as pith tissues surrounding these pith tissues are found xylem and phloem these xylem and phloem tissues can be found arranged in a circle or they could be found arranged in patches as you can see here there are in, uh, are examples of soleno steel dictyo steel and u steel which are which are found in uh, pteridophytes now let us talk about leaves the fern leaves are also called as fronds young fern leaves are called as fiddlehead or crozier which is coiled just like the spring of a clock this type of varnishing is known as circinate varnishing varnishing is basically the arrangement of young budding leaves at the apical portion of any stem so all the pteridophytes they and especially the fern leaves they show a unique uh, kind of varnishing and this structure is also sometimes referred as crozier and the varnation is termed as circinate varnation the leaf can be subdivided or could be studied by dividing this whole leaf into various parts this entire leaf is termed as frond in case of pteridophyte fern a frond has two parts the lower or the basal petiole which is also termed as leaf stalk and the upper laminated or laminar structure which is called as the blade in case of ferns the fronds could be pinnate type or it could be bipinnate type in case of pinnate type the pedicel also sometimes called as stipe it bears multiple leaflets multiple lamina and the structure on which these lamina are born they are termed as rachis these lamina could be a single structure in that case the fronds are called as pinnate front front and if they are further subdivided they are termed as bipinnate or subsequently multi pinnate fronds in fern and related species they differ with the ferns that they do not have distinct fronds in other pteridophyte species their leaves are small and they are known as microphylls or they are linear as in the case of isoids which has a single vein and they are arranged along simple and branched stem the leaf as we have already discussed has three parts the stipe which is the basal portion or the pedicel the lamina and the rachis the rachis is the elongated part on which lamina are born the stipe is the junction part of leaf which arises from rhizome and connect rest of leaf part the lamina or the main blade of leaf is the green leaf part uh, of the leaf which is photosynthetic in nature and responsible for all the assimilation and photosynthetic activity the rachis is the middle stalk which is comparable to the midrib of any angiospermic leaf so if we have to uh, describe the structure of a fern it could be basal rhizome which is uh, originally a stem which gives rise to roots roots adventitious and they are branched into small rhizomes on the nodes of rhizome 
arises all the fronts these fronts are attached with rhizome with the help of a small pedicel or stalk which is called as type this entire portion of the uh, frond is called as blade and the midrib like structure on which pinna lamina are arranged they are called as rachis the younger fronds are also called as fiddle head or crozier because of their unique curved arrangement at the uh, apical portion these unique curved arrangement are also termed as circinate vernation as far as the fertile parts in pteridophytes are concerned the fern fronds have simple and compound leaf pteridophytes reproduce by spores which are unicellular structures these spores are produced by meiotic division in specialized structure called as sporangia a sporangium is an enclosure in which spores are formed it can be composed of a single cell or can be multicellular sporangia can be terminal that is on the tips or lateral that is they are they can be placed along the sides of stem or they could be associated with leaves uh, the various positions of sporangia can be seen here in this diagram where sometimes they are lateral in position sometimes they are they are axial uh, they could be terminal in position also or they could be found on the underside of fronds or leaf lamina in majority of fern sporangia are smaller clustered and distinct these small clustered and distinct groups are called as sori each sporangium is attached to the fronds by uh, the help of a short stalk so here in this front on the lower side there are cluster of sporangium these cluster of sporangium are termed as sorus or sori which is a plural form each sorus has multiple sporangium and these sporangium bear spores within themselves most pteridophytes are homosporous only one kind of spore is produced in homosporous pteridophytes whereas some ferns are heterosporous also where two different types of spores are produced if you could see in this diagram only one type of spores are found and such type of pteridophyte species are called as homosporous species whereas in some both megaspores as well as microspores here you can see the megaspores which has large spores four in number in one sporangium whereas in case of microsporangium multiple spores smaller in size are found enclosed in one particular uh, sporangium so the uh, pteridophytes show some species are showing homosporous uh, behavior whereas some uh, exhibit heterosporous activities also in most homosporous pteridophytes the sporangia are born in the axils or on the apices of specialized sporophylls on the spices uh, apices of specialized sporophylls they are not on the lower surface of the leaves as in the case of ferns for example uh, in case of xylotum mesipteris lycopodium equisetum and phylloglossum whereas in most heterosporous pteridophytes there are two kinds of sporangia they are termed as microsporangia and megasporangia the examples are selachinella and isoids the microsporangia produce microspores and megasporangia produces megaspores these give rise to two kinds of gametophytes that are functionally male or female respectively 
in case of we can compare the life cycle of homosporous and heterosporous uh, pteridophytes. In case of homosporous pteridophytes, only one type of spores are produced. These spores after germination give rise to one single gametophyte which is monoecious in nature and these monoecious gametophytes they bear antheridia and archegonia both and fertilization takes place on this gametophyte and then new sporophytic uh, phase begins. In case of heterosporous pteridophytes, two different types of spores are born that is microspores are born by microsporophylls whereas megaspores are born by megasporophyll. These two different types of spores give rise to two different gametophytes. The lower the smaller spore gives rise to male gametophyte whereas the larger spore or megaspore gives rise to female gametophyte. The female gametophyte bears archegonia on which the motile spermatozoids and sperm cells they come and fuse the egg cells and from this female gametophyte arises the sporophytic generation in pteridophytes. So, both homosporous and heterosporous pteridophytes they also differ in their life cycle. In ferns, sporangia are typically found on the abaxial surface that is the underside of the leaf and are densely aggregated into clusters. These uh, densely aggregated clusters they are called as sori. In some, in some species they are protected during development by a scale or film of tissue called as indusium. These indusium form an umbrella like cover. These indusium could be of two types. They could be true indusium or they could be a false indusium. A false indusium is an extension of the uh, epidermis of leaflet and it extends to cover the growing bunch of sporangia. Whereas, the true indusium it arises from the lower epidermis or the abaxial side of frond and they divide their cells and form specialized coverings to protect growing sporangia on both the sides. And in this sporangia the, the two types of spores could be born the uh, monolith or trilith uh, spores could be born. The arrangement of uh, sporangium is also vary uh, is also varying in case of pteridophytes it could be clustered, it could be clubbed or it could be uh, scattered uh, with certain uh, dispersal structures. The sori occur on the sporophyte generation and the sporangia within are produced with the help of uh, haploid myospores. Sori may be covered by a structure of extension of lamina cells which is called as indusium. Some ferns have their sporangia scattered along the margin of the leaves and in case of lycophytes the sporangia are born uh, on the adaxial surface that is the upper side of the leaves or sometimes laterally on the stem. In this diagram you could see the microsporangium or, or the megasporangium they are born on the adaxial side or adaxial surface of the leaves. The leaves that bear sporangia or sori are called as sporophylls. If the plant is uh, heterosporous, the sporangia bearing leaves are distinguished as either microsporophylls or megasporophylls. We can see this uh, with the help of a diagram 
where the sporophylls, the leaves which are bearing sporangia on their adaxial side, they are called as sporophylls and they could be of two types that is megasporophylls or microsporophylls. Microsporophylls bear microsporangium on their adaxial side. In this diagram, you could very clearly see a megasporophyll which bears a megasporangium on its adaxial side and inside that megasporangium only four large spores or megaspores are found. In case of microsporophyll, the leaf bears microsporangium on their adaxial side. Pteridophytes can also be categorized into two types on the basis of developmental sequence of sporangium. They can be eusporangiate or they could be leptosporangiate. In a leptosporangiate uh, type of pteridophytes, the development involves a single initial cell that divide and develop the stalk, wall and spores within the sporangium. Uh, there are around 64 spores in a leptosporangium. In this diagram, you could very well see that a single cell takes up the responsibility and commits itself to give rise to the developing sporangium. So, this one cell divides into two cells and then the upper cell uh, divides into various planes giving rise to the sporangial wall and spor uh, sporogenous cell inside and these sporogenous cells divide to give rise to spore tetrads. In contrast to leptosporangiate species, the eusporangium in case of eusporangiate species of tridophytes, the characteristic of all other vascular plants and some primitive tridophytes also, the, sporo, the sporangial initial are present in a layer that is more than one layer. A eusporangium is larger and hence contain more spores and its wall is multi-layered. You can very well see in the diagram that in case of eusporangia, a row of cells or a layer of cells that is multiple cells, they are involved. These are the superficial sporangial initials. They uh, develop sporangium wall and within this sporangium wall are produced uh, uh, tapetal layer and these tapetal layers are responsible for the nutrition of sporocytes and ultimately the spores, uh, spore tetrads are formed. So, uh, here in this uh, group of plant, we also see that during the process of reproduction, there is an evolution from leptosporangiate structure of uh, reproduction towards eusporangia where uh, we have multiple or more number of spores. This is a remarkable and very important evolutionary aspect when we move towards gymnosperm and uh, angiosperms. We will understand that uh, these uh, evolutionary steps have helped in more efficient reproductive mechanisms. So, uh, th this was all about structure and reproduction in case of pteridophytes. In our uh, forthcoming uh, lecture, we will be discussing about various uh, genera of pteridophytes, their type studies. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Thank you so much.